In today's video, we're going to look at 10 ways that acrylics, gouache and watercolours all differ from each other. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel we talk about all things watercolour as well as drawing, mixed media videos like this one, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about working in these three mediums. That may seem a bold claim, but I think I can do it. So we're going to go through literally everything you need to know. So I'm going to go through how the paints are formulated, how you wet them, how you re-wet them, how you layer them, how you lighten them, what brushes you use, what surfaces you use, even what texture and interesting techniques you can do with them. And I'm going to explain if you can and indeed how you can combine these three mediums together. In other words, can you put them on the same painting? We'll talk about that at the end of the video, but let's get started by looking at the properties of the paints themselves. So let's start with watercolours. Now watercolours come in many different shapes and forms. They do come in liquid form. I don't have any of those. You can buy them in liquid form though. They also come most often in tubes like this and pans or sets that are little blocks like this. You can also squeeze them out into your palette like this and allow them to dry because watercolours re-wet. Now watercolours are formulated with pure pigment and a little bit of binder. There are all sorts of ingredients that go into the binders. One of the main ones is gum arabic but there are others that are used too. The formulations vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. The medium itself is transparent and you apply it with a fair amount of water. Once it's dry it can be to some extent lifted and re-wet as you work in with other layers. Next let's look at gouache. So gouache also comes in tubes. It does occasionally come in block or pan form but very very rarely because although it does re-wet it doesn't re-wet quite as effectively as watercolour. You can also get you know if you want a lot of white for example you can also get a large pot of it like this. So what's the difference between this and watercolours in application? You pretty much do the same thing in that you get some water and you apply to your surface. The main difference is that gouache is far more opaque. It's sometimes called opaque watercolour. It's sometimes called designer's gouache. If you went back 40 or 50 years to a time when nobody was using Photoshop in advertisements, commercial artists were using a form of gouache, sometimes called poster colour or poster paint. If you see a paint that nowadays that's called poster paint, it's likely to be a cheaper version of gouache. When gouache dries, it has a kind of chalky look to it and it tends to dry very, very flat and evenly, which is why it was liked for advertisements and for posters. And like watercolour, to some extent, it will re-wet and lift. Finally, acrylics. Look at the difference between my gouache paints and my watercolours and my acrylics. The first thing you notice is the tubes are much, much bigger. And that's because you'll just get through a lot more paint when you're painting in this medium. It tends to be applied much more thickly. And whilst you can use some water to apply it like I'm doing here, you can also apply it without water. It can kind of imitate watercolours as it can imitate oil paints, but it's best used on its own terms. Now you'll never get this in a block form like this. And the reason for that is this is a pigment that's mixed with polymers and binders that literally become plastic as they dry. So unlike these first two squares, once this square here is dry, I could throw water on it all day long. It's not going to move. Next, let's look at how your paints dry. Will they dry lighter or darker than you apply them? This is really important. If you don't get this right, you're not going to get great results. It does vary for each of these mediums. So let's point the camera downwards and look at that next. So here's my little swatch of watercolour. You may already notice that it's drying a bit lighter than when I applied it. In fact, watercolour can dry up to 50% lighter after applying, which is why you need to be quite bold with it. And why often beginners start out with very wishy-washy paintings because they don't go on strong enough because watercolours dry much lighter than you apply them unlike acrylics. Now acrylics tend to dry darker than you apply them so this is something that has to be factored in when you're working in them. And what about gouache? Now gouache is kind of somewhere between the two in that the darker colours of gouache tend to dry a little bit lighter because it has that sort of soft chalkiness to it but the lighter colours will appear to dry darker. So watercolours dry lighter, acrylics dry darker and gouache 
tends to dry a little bit darker except when you get into the very dark colors when it will appear to be a little bit lighter because of the chalky whiteness that tends to be one of its properties. Next up let's talk about the best brushes for each of these media. So you might notice that I applied each of these with the same brush and I used a watercolor brush like this one. But here's an acrylic brush so what's the difference? There's several differences. One thing you'll notice is that the handle tends to be a bit longer with an acrylics brush and compared to an oil painting brush which would be even longer than these two. Now the reason they make oil and acrylic brushes longer is that there's more of a tendency to work on canvas. We'll talk more about surfaces in a minute. But when you work on a surface such as a canvas it's sometimes necessary to give yourself a little bit of distance so that you're not constantly leaning in your paint. Watercolors have traditionally been painted over smaller areas so that's one difference. The other difference, the main difference, is in the bristles. So these bristles are rougher, they're firmer. Now because acrylics dry to plastic, it's necessary to keep your brush wet and to clean it frequently whilst you're painting with acrylics. If I leave this watercolor brush on the table with watercolor on it, I mean, it's not great, I shouldn't do it. If I could leave it there for 24 hours, I could just come down and clean it the next morning. Whereas this one would be ruined. And so these stiffer bristles not only will help to apply this thicker paint because a soft bristle doesn't always move a very thick sticky paint around as effectively but you can stand these in the water now to be clear no brushes should be left standing in the water for more than a few minutes because it affects all sorts of things like the handle and the ferrule but these stiffer bristles can be left for a minute or two standing in water and it won't do them much harm now do you have to use an acrylic brush for acrylics and a watercolor brush for watercolor and gouache? No you don't. You absolutely can make up your own rules about this sort of stuff. I often use these stiff acrylic brushes for getting texture techniques in watercolor. They can also be great if you've got dried pans like this one and you're having to scrub and scrub and scrub. Don't use your best watercolor brush. An old acrylics brush will mix that paint up nice and easily for you without damaging your best brush. Likewise because I'm at heart a watercolorist. When I do work in acrylics, I tend to take over my watercolor brushes and certainly for the small details, I work with watercolor brushes. But that said, I would choose an older brush, a scruffier brush. I wouldn't use my best brand new brushes because acrylics are very tough on brushes. And even if you keep them wet and you clean them, you will tend to get a buildup of acrylic paint, you know, minute little bits of it up near the ferrule here. And so it's best if you are going to use watercolor brushes for your acrylics to use your older ones. So we've got our paints and brushes but what surfaces can we apply them to? So let's talk about painting surfaces. Now with watercolors and gouache paper is king. They were designed to be painted on watercolor paper and that's their best surface. That's not to say before you all kick off in the comments that's not to say that watercolor can't be painted on a huge range of surfaces and there are mediums that will enable you to paint it on canvas. There's a medium that will enable you to paint it on wood. I'm going to do a review of that one later on on this YouTube channel but at their heart these are mediums that are meant to be painted on paper. They just won't look quite the same on other surfaces. Now that might be fine. You might be looking for a completely different effect or you might want to put them on a different surface. I'm not here to stop you doing that but paper is their natural surface. Now acrylics are absolutely king when it comes to painting on different surfaces. You can pretty much put them on anything. You can put them on wood panels, you can put them on MDF, you can paint on stretched watercolor paper. I wouldn't necessarily paint if you were going to paint very thickly, very impasto on watercolor paper, but I've often painted acrylics on watercolor paper. It's my favorite surface. I'm not really a huge fan of painting on canvas. You can paint them on canvas, on canvas board, you can paint them on walls. If you're going to do something like a mural in your house, then acrylics are the answer. And let me show you something. Now, don't judge the painting because it's halfway through. This is a project that I am doing on Patreon. And this is a piece of real Egyptian papyrus I bought on my holiday. I'm so big, I'm trying to get it on camera properly here. And I'm painting a, a, a beetle, or at least a, a scarab beetle part of an Egyptian mummy that I saw and I'm painting a fish that I saw when I went diving as well. It's still got the details to be put on. I've just started doing it but this is how versatile acrylics are. You can put them on any surface. If you want to see this project and lots of other step by steps you'll need to pop over to my Patreon. I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. So as a rough guide your watercolor and your gouache are best done on watercolor paper. Acrylics would most commonly be painted on canvas, but as I said, there are a huge range of surfaces that they will sit on. 
they dry somewhat flexible as well. So you can put them on a surface that has some curvature or some movement or something that's going to be rolled. Unlike gouache, which if you layered it quite thickly and then you tried to roll it up, it could crack. Your acrylic paint should just bend. If I wanted to roll up my piece of Egyptian papyrus, it would likely be absolutely fine. At this point, if you're enjoying this video, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could hit the like button, hit the thumbs up button. YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. I'm trying to grow my channel to 100,000 subscribers at the moment. If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people. And I'm super grateful to all of you who watch me here on YouTube. And the last thing to be spoken about in terms of equipment is paint palettes. What sort of paint palette should you use for each of these mediums? Now let's talk about palettes. Now with watercolor and gouache, you can use ceramic palettes like this one, or you can use plastic palettes like this one. Some people think that the paint beads up in plastic palettes. I see all over the internet people complaining about how the paint beads and you know how they, uh, how they want to stop this happening. Honestly, I never take any notice. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, but if it's something that upsets you, some people find a ceramic palette a little bit nicer to work with. So that's watercolors and gouache. Now let's talk about acrylics because you have a lot more options with acrylics. Now the first thing with acrylics is you mustn't use a plastic palette. Depending on the type of plastic and the formulation of your acrylics, you may find that when you place your acrylic paints onto your plastic palette, they are there forevermore, that they stain and you can't ever get them off. So a ceramic palette is a great option for acrylics. This is actually watercolors in here, but if it was acrylics and they were dried, it wouldn't make any difference. All I have to do is run them under a hot tap and they literally will melt off. Another option you've got for acrylics is a tear off paper palette like this, tend to be made from sort of waxed paper. Those are great as well, because once you finish painting, you can just throw them in the bin. I have seen people use cling film or what you would call in America sarin wrap and paint on there and then just throw that in the bin but honestly that's just adding more plastic into the environment. Now one more option for acrylic paints is to use something called a stay wet palette. These palettes have a layer of membrane in the base and they also have a lid so that your paints will stay wet for much longer. Acrylic paints tend to dry incredibly incredibly quickly. I can't show you one of those palettes because I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't use them. I tend to just put a few colors out on a little small plate, paint for half an hour or so, and then get rid of it and start afresh. But if you're gonna do a lot of acrylic painting, you may want to invest in a stay wet palette. You can also make your own from Tupperware boxes. Just put it into Google. There are instructions on how to make your own stay wet palette. Next, let's look at layering and glazing, which is applying a transparent layer over an underneath layer. Again, this varies for each medium. So let's talk about how we layer and glaze colors. So to glaze a color is to apply a thin transparent layer over the top. Now with watercolors, if you let them dry in between layers, they tend to sink into the paper and set quite nicely. The natural adhesives that are within the binders stick them to the paper. And although you can wet them and lift them out to some extent, they're very good at staying quite put. So if I grab a little bit of, um, let's get some of this orange color here, we can layer over the top of this dry color here really quite nicely. Now, what about gouache? Gouache tends to be somewhat thicker and it tends to have body color in, which can be white, but it can also just mean that they have a different density of pigments and that stronger pigments are used. Now, gouache can be quite problematic when you layer one area over the top of another area. It can be really quite useful that it re-wets and that you can lift it, but it doesn't tend to stay put as much as watercolor. So let's go on here and see how well this one stays put. Look at that. Do you see what happens when I put the yellow over the top? It's lifting the blue and dragging it down. So gouache is a medium that really can be quite tricky when it comes to layering. People often think opaque watercolor, that must be a little bit easier to paint with, but really it's one of the hardest mediums out there. And I'm not trying to do it a disservice. I really love gouache. It's a beautiful medium, but it really doesn't layer very well. Let's move on to acrylics. Now, though I said at the beginning that acrylics can be applied with or without water, you have to be careful with how much water you put in acrylics because acrylics aren't the same as watercolor. You can water watercolor down to an almost infinite amount and 
it still works, it still applies to the paper, it still sticks, it's absolutely fine. But acrylic is designed to turn into a form of plastic as it dries. If you add too much water, then what you're doing is you're actually messing with the integrity of the paint. Now, if you're applying that acrylic paint watered down onto watercolor paper, you can get away with using a bit more water because the acrylic paint actually sinks into the surface. But if you're applying the acrylic paint onto a non-porous surface, like some sealed wood or a canvas, then you really can't put too much water in it. So what do you do if you want to layer? You use a medium. So this is some acrylic gloss medium. I'm gonna put a little bit of this out in a dish and it's basically shiny and transparent, but it has all of those acrylic binders in there that are necessary to keep the paint stable. So what we can do is mix the paint with the gloss medium and we can make a more transparent color without having to use water. So my color is now more transparent, but it's still completely stable. And I can apply it over the top of my first layer without losing the integrity of the paint. So let's look at lightening your colors and whether or not you should use white paint. So let's look at lightening these colors and do we need to use white paint? So let's look at our watercolors first. So I've got a staining color here. This is some phthalo blue. And if I apply it without much water, then it's really strong and dark. As I apply more water, we can lighten this color. and We can get this color incredibly light indeed without any use of white paint. Now you tend to get two whites that come in a watercolor set. You might get a zinc white, sometimes called Chinese white, that's sort of a semi-transparent white. And you might get a titanium white, more often sold as gouache, but you certainly can mix your white into watercolor. A lot of purists will tell you, you must never do this because it makes the color opaque, which it does. But there are one or two occasions when I would consider using white with watercolor. There are some specific cases when actually it can work really well. We have some houses where I live, which is in Suffolk in the UK. We have a pink house, Suffolk pink they call it. It's a very specific shade of pink. And if you're painting a landscape and you want to get that really sort of creamy pink color, no amount of watering down your permanent rose is going to do it. It actually only looks like the paint on the houses if you put some white in. There are other situations as well when I would use white paint with watercolor. I'll link to a video I made about that in the description of this video. But generally speaking, you would just use increasing amounts of water to water down your paint. And if you wanted something pure white, you would literally reserve the white of the paper. Now I've popped a bit of gouache just on the corner of my watercolor palette here. I hope I remember I've got a different medium on there. Now you certainly can water down your gouache paint with water and make it lighter. But because of the nature of gouache, when it dries, very opaque and very matte, and rather chalky looking, actually to use some white with it tends to work very well indeed. And here we can use our white paint to make a lighter color. Now we've already mentioned that it's not a good idea to add too much water to your acrylic paint, which means that you are going to get through a ton of white paint. So if you're buying a set of acrylic paints, I suggest you buy a massive tub of white because you're going to need a lot of it. It's the best way of lightening your colors. And just to add, if you're gonna ask me how to darken colors, I actually have a video coming up in about four days about that very subject. Now, it'll be a watercolor video. It's gonna show you how to darken watercolors, but the process I'll be using can be used for any of these mediums. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do make sure you do that and ring the little bell notification. You'll get notified when that video goes up. I'm currently planning it for the Monday after this one. Next, let's have a little chat about the order in which you apply the tones. For example, you may have heard with watercolor that you should work light to dark, but what about acrylics and gouache? So let's talk about the order in which you apply your paint. So you may have heard with watercolors that you should work light to dark. And this is because if we're not using white paint as we generally aren't with watercolors, because they're transparent, you can't paint a light color on top of a dark color, but you can do it the other way around. So I can get a little bit of my, uh, my dark paint here and I'll be able to paint on top of these lighter underneath areas. Now gouache is a little different in that you can paint light on top of dark to an extent. So we can get a lighter color like this. Depending how thickly we layer it, we can paint light on top of dark, but we have seen that difficulty that we sometimes have 
with underneath colours lifting a little bit so that's just something to consider but you can work either light to dark or dark to light with gouache and the same is true of acrylics you can certainly put light colours on top of dark I've got a little water on my brush there and this colour is not a particularly opaque one and so you'll see there is some transparency to it generally speaking with acrylics what I do is I knock out the background colour first particularly if you're working on a canvas unlike watercolour where it's fine to have the paper showing through that doesn't look good at all with acrylics if you've got bits of canvas showing through so whether starting light or dark and usually I would choose a light or a mid-tone I would tend to block out the entire canvas first and then work up from there and again you can work light to dark or dark to light because I'm at heart a watercolorist I tend always to work light to dark because even in colors that are said to be opaque like gouache and acrylics the truth is they do vary a huge amount and there are certainly particularly in the case of acrylics where some colors are just formulated to be very transparent indeed so working light to dark generally keeps you out of trouble so now you've got the basics sorted what about special effects and texture let's look at that next now if acrylics are the king of painting on different surfaces then watercolors are the king of special effects you can do things with watercolors blending and bleeding and running effects that you simply cannot do with any other medium they also combine fantastically with mixed media such as oil pastels you can use things like salt and cling film. You can even just mess around with water levels and get amazing things happening. This is why I love watercolor. You simply can't do these things with any other medium. Now, one of the things you don't do with watercolor is you don't tend to leave the brush marks on display because it just doesn't work very well. Because if watercolor drives in a way that's uneven, that's unplanned, then it tends to look very bad. Brush marks in watercolor tend to look very uncomfortable and not attractive at all. Unlike gouache, where actually having brush marks on display can give you some really lovely effects. And it's great fun to work with these colors in a way that's quite painterly and to leave your brush strokes on display. Similar to how they would look perhaps with oil painting or with acrylic painting. If you don't want a completely flat area, then the way to get texture is to mix your colors one into another whilst they're still wet and get these beautiful textural marks. Now, acrylic paints are similar, but we do have a few more options. You can buy texture paste, texture mediums that are meant to go with acrylic paints so that you can actually build them up 3D on the canvas or on the paper. This is known as working in pasto. You can see me doing a little bit of it here where the paint actually lifts off the surface. But you can get a texture medium that makes this even more noticeable. Because acrylic paints are quite thick, you can do other things such as scraffito, whereby you can actually draw into the paint with a sharpened stick or the end of your paintbrush. There are also mediums that you can get for acrylic paint, like iridescent medium, that will make your paints shimmer and shine. And indeed, there are metallic paints too. And I've already showed you the acrylic gloss medium, whereby you can get a transparent color going over the top of another color. So lots of options here, but none of them beat watercolor for the versatility and the effects that you can get. So what about combining these mediums? Can you, for example, use acrylics and watercolor on the same painting? The short answer is yes, but you have to do it in the right order. We're going to look at how you combine each of these mediums next. So can we combine these mediums together? Can we do mixed media with them? Well, yes, we can. So if I go back to, it's still a little bit wet, this uh, acrylic gloss medium and acrylic paint that I had here. I can put this on top of my watercolor with no trouble at all. And indeed, I can do the same with gouache. Gouache and watercolor are both different types of watercolor, so you can also layer gouache and watercolor absolutely easily. But what you want to do in all of these cases is to make sure that the watercolor is going on first. What won't work for you, and believe me, I've tried it, is to put watercolor on top of acrylic. Watercolor needs the absorbency of the paper in order to sink in and adhere to the paper. And if you put acrylic paint on first, watercolor has nothing to stick to. It's just going to bead up. I remember trying, I think I was trying some kind of strange technique, that one where you put 
washing up liquid in and you make sort of bubble shapes on your paper and I thought imagine if I did this with acrylic and then I put watercolor on top and because the acrylic doesn't re-wet then I would be able to see the acrylic through the watercolor well fabulous idea but it just doesn't work you can't put watercolor or gouache which is also watercolor based on top of acrylic paint but you can put acrylic paint on top of watercolor or gouache and you can mix and interchange watercolor and gouache together all day long so do let me know in the comments if you've tried each of these mediums or perhaps this video has given you a little bit more confidence to have a go now before you leave don't forget to have a look in the video description there's lots of free stuff in there for you i've got some free downloadable pdf guides i've even got a free watercolor course that you can grab for no money whatsoever you can also find out about all of my paid courses my patreon subscriptions where you can follow along with all of my own paintings and if you enjoyed learning more about these mediums, I think you'll enjoy the video I made about gouache. You can watch that one right now.